Good evening. Welcome to the February 21st edition of the Downers Grove Village Council meeting. We're glad you've joined us, either here in Chambers or being broadcast live. As is our custom, we'll begin our meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Rosa, would you please call the roll? Mayor Barnett? Here. Commissioner Jose? Here. Commissioner Wallace? Here. Commissioner Sadowski Fugit? Commissioner Colavaney? Here. Commissioner Gilmartin? Here. Commissioner Glover? Here. Item three on our agenda, minutes of previous council meetings. We have a uh, motion to, pr to approve such minutes. Mayor, I move that the council adopt the February 7th, 2023 minutes as presented. Second. Any comments or questions from the council? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Item four is our consent agenda. Item H, pursuant to council rules, has been removed from the consent agenda. Is there a motion concerning the consent agenda absent item H? Mayor, if I may, um, item H pertains to the funding of uh, Meals on Wheels program here in town. And based on the request from that organization's uh, director, um, who is, re I think, requesting additional funding, I would ask that we um, take a little more time to look at this, uh, evaluate if the contribution that we have allocated is adequate, um, and therefore I would move that we table item H uh, as to um, a, a future date of March 7th. Second. Any comments or questions about tabling? It's not normal, but we'll... Rosa, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Bill Martin? Aye. Commissioner Jose? Aye. Commissioner Glover? Aye. Commissioner Colavaney? Aye. Commissioner Wallace? Aye. Mayor Barnett? Aye. Item H is tabled until March 7th. There's additional information, or will be additional information, on the website about item H. Is there a motion concerning the revised consent agenda? Mayor, I move that the council adopt the consent agenda absent item H as presented. Second. Rosa, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Jose? Aye. Commissioner Wallace? Aye. Commissioner Glover? Aye. Commissioner Gilmartin? Aye. Commissioner Colavaney? Aye. Mayor Barnett? Aye. Item five on our agenda is our active agenda. We do not have an active agenda tonight, so we'll move to item six, which is our first reading. This is the portion of our meeting where we begin discussion of subjects on which we plan to take future action or continue such discussions. With that, I'll turn it over to Village Manager Fieldman. Thank you, Mayor Barnett. There are three items on tonight's first reading agenda, really two topics. The first two items will be presented by our Community Development Director, Stan Popovich. Thank you, Manager Fieldman. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, the first two items, as Manager Fieldman noted, uh, is for a Plata subdivision with a lot depth exception, especially used for a drive through restaurant and a parking variation uh, for the Butterfield Plaza Shopping Center. The Butterfield Plaza Shopping Center is located on the nor <coughs> north side of Butterfield Road between Downers Drive and Highland Avenue. If we zoom in a little bit here, you can see the shopping center outlined in blue. It is a multi-tenant shopping center uh, with many uh, tenants in the building there. They are proposing to create an outlot here in the southwest corner of the property. The proposal is, uh, you can see, is existing. It's open space and green space uh, with some detention provided. The proposal is to create an outlot at this location uh, which would also have a cross access easement uh, throughout the shopping center for the benefit of this lot and the existing lot that's there. Uh, the proposal is does request a lot depth exception and that is requested to ensure on this graphic here uh, to ensure that the north property line uh, stays off of any parking spaces that are existing or uh, the parking islands there so it's pretty clear uh, which lot is responsible for those parking spaces or for those landscape islands. Uh, this is the proposed restaurant, be a Wendy's. It is going to be uh, clad with exterior aluminum siding, aluminum composite panels, and storefront windows. This is their uh, main facade that would be facing east. And then if we look at the site again, and then we put the site plan over it, you'll see the building is in the middle of the property, uh, sort of in the gray area there. Uh, a lot of green space is remaining. Uh, the drive through lane would uh, go counterclockwise from the west to the east and go around the building there. And if you recall, Butterfield Road is significantly higher, so uh, this drive-through lane would be lower uh, than the adjacent oncoming uh, westbound traffic. 
And then along with uh, this drive-through motion, uh, the petitioner is putting in two uh, detention vaults to accommodate the stormwater uh, that is going to be displaced by this development. Uh, and then there will be also be post-construction best management practices are required for this development as well. Due to the removal of some parking spaces associated with this proposal, um, the center will have 399 parking spaces total, where 410 are required, hence the variation request. Uh, the traffic parking is traffic study that was done found that approximately 52% of the parking spaces are full at the peak time period, so there's adequate parking up here uh, to, to provide a variance of 11 spaces. With regard to the comprehensive plan, the site's uh, located as a regional commercial site. Uh, the goals of the comp plan include attracting new retail developments, promoting a regional customer base, high level of design, and most importantly here, we're using existing curb cuts with cross-access easements uh, for both lots. Uh, the Planning Commission considered the case at, on their February 6th uh, meeting, and they found that the Plata subdivision standards, the lot depth standards, the special use standards, the variance standards were met in the recommended approval of the uh, petition. I'm happy to answer any questions for you as well tonight, and then we do have representatives with petitioner here as well available. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Stan. Any council comments or questions? Rich? Um, yes, uh, I like this proposal. I plan on uh, supporting it. Uh, the fact that um, the uh, parking will only um, be short by some 3%. And there's 185 uh, unused parking lots. Been to that place and I've never seen um, that part of the parking lot full. So we're going to turn an asphalt uh, place into a, a jobs creation site and uh, a revenue sales tax uh, revenue site. Um, also regarding the um, lot line, it's 95 percent of the requirement. But, you know, every once in a while you run into a situation where life gets in the way based on what is currently there. I think the logic uh, be behind not splitting the uh, parking lot makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, this is a, a good thing for us because it will create uh, sales tax revenue for the village from people who don't live in the village. So that gives us free revenue without having to provide additional services for those folks. So, see, this is a big win for us. So. Plan to vote yes. Thank you, Rich. Others? Uh, Stan, I just had one thing. Could you go back to um, the slide where you had the uh, green and blue? Yeah, that one. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I generally agree with Commissioner Colavani and, and the use of many of these big parking spaces for additional outlots is something I think benefits all of us. Uh, but one of the things I'm assuming from looking at this, that this will function from a parking standpoint very much like the other, the west side of this area where there's, mm -hmm. you know, Mission and Portillo's and somebody else, yep. that the parking between the inline units and the outlots will sort of be shared. Mm -hmm. Could we ask for people to kick around a little bit of uh, an idea that, that those green spots on the north side of that drawing that those somehow be a little bit more pedestrian refuge islandy <laughs> that's a technical term <laughs> um, that just my observation of many of these outlaw situations is that tends to be a little bit of a challenge pedestrian safety i know when we were working with that new one down at uh, 75th street mm -hmm. we did the same thing we worked on it wasn't the same thing we worked on pedestrian access to that and so with that intentional drive, you know, east to west on the north side of the, of the lot itself, that becomes really like a street almost, except there's no sidewalk. Sure, we can work with the petitioner to provide access to the north. Uh, IDOT was not conducive. We didn't want to create a sidewalk out to Butterfield Road because there's no sidewalk on Butterfield Road. Yeah. Um, so that was the challenge from the Wendy's to Butterfield Road, but we can definitely work on creating connections to the north. Just some space for them to sure. stand there with their food and not get run over. <laughs> Any other council comments, questions? Any questions or comments from the audience? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on. The final item on tonight's first reading agenda is consideration of a contract for improvements in the downtown business area. And here to provide information on this item is our public works director, Andy Sickich. Thank you, Dave. Good evening, Mayor and Council. 
Um, tonight I'll be presenting the Downtown Crosswalk Accessibility and Traffic Signal Improvement Project. And I'd like to start off uh, the presentation by showing a fantastic little video that was done by the Village's Communications Department uh, to provide the public with information this about summer, the project. The Village will continue to update downtown crosswalks as part of a multi-year plan to improve pedestrian safety. The project will consist of the removal and replacement of the Main Street crosswalks at the Franklin, Warren, Burlington, Curtis, and Maple intersections. Improvements will include accessible sidewalks for persons with disabilities, stamped pavement crosswalks, and new accessible pedestrian signals providing audible tone. Fairmont, walk sign is on to cross. The work is scheduled to start in June after Grove Fest and is expected to be completed in October. Construction will be done in stages to maintain pedestrian access to businesses at all times. Traffic delays are expected during construction hours as one lane of traffic will be closed while traffic flow is maintained by flaggers. Pedestrian safety is a top priority for the village and these crosswalks and accessibility improvements will serve the community for years to come. So that does a great job of explaining the project, I think, and it makes my job tonight uh, a little bit easier. Uh, I will be a little redundant, but uh, bear with me. So over the past few years, we have been systematically replacing the old cross concrete crosswalks and paver sidewalk ramps with new, aesthetically pleasing, durable, and cost-effective low-maintenance materials. The red stars on this map um, indicate where work has already taken place, and then the yellow circles indicates uh, where these intersections will be upgraded with this contract in 2023. All four legs of each of these intersections w are planned to receive the same treatment as, as those in recent years. If you haven't seen them, this is what they look like. The before photo is on the left and the after photo is on the right. This is the crosswalk across Main Street at Grove. And you can really see the difference in the materials that we're now using for the crosswalks. These will be much easier to maintain and will be much less expensive to replace in the future when they are the, at the end of their useful life. This shows the crosswalk at Mokel in Burlington, and you can see that the old paver ramps have been replaced um, by concrete that matches the rest of the downtown with just a slightly different pattern scored into it to set it apart from the rest of the sidewalk. So the contract under consideration tonight includes uh, the following items at all five of those signalized intersections. New accessible sidewalk ramps will be constructed, which in most cases will require larger sections of sidewalk to also be removed so that they can be regraded at flatter slopes um, in order to meet accessibility requirements. The new crosswalks will be constructed using the updated materials that I showed you. There will also be traffic signal improvements. Uh, as you saw in the video, new accessible pedestrian signals with the audible tones will be installed also to meet the updated accessibility requirements. Uh, all five intersections will also receive new traffic signal heads to replace the ones that are there that have been in place about 20 years. Um, and they will receive battery backups, which will alleviate the flashing red lights in case of a, uh, a power outage. The project is scheduled to start on June 26th, which is right after Grow Fest. And the overall project is scheduled to be complete by October 16th, but the portion of the work at Franklin will be uh, finished by August 4th in order to uh, avoid interfering with school operations. The construction will be sequenced so that not all intersections will be under <coughs> construction at the same time. The plan is to construct Warren and Curtis first and then move to Burlington and Maple with Franklin fit into the schedule as needed to meet that August 4th deadline. After we issue a notice to proceed, we will receive a more detailed construction schedule from the contractor and more specific scheduling information will be provided to uh, the affected businesses and to downtown management as the project moves along. Um, staff will work directly with the business owners to coordinate the work and alleviate any impacts on their operations. The work will be phased to allow access to adjacent buildings at all times. Temporary gravel will be used where possible and there will be uh, a lot of signage to help direct the pedestrians through the downtown. Temporary lane closures will be required during certain portions of the work, not for the entire four or five months. The contractor will be using flaggers and during those times traffic delays can be expected. So in this slide you can see some of the work that we've done in the past years and you can see how it was phased to allow pedestrian and vehicular access 
to be uh, continuous throughout the project. This is the work that will be performed in the street, and this is primarily when they will need the flaggers. So you see on the right side there what that looks like. And that is what the pattern crosswalk material looks like as it's being applied to the pavement. And with that, I'll open it up to any questions. Thanks, Andy. Any council comments or questions? Yeah, Bruce? If I, w I would just say um, this is great. looks like um, a lot of great work has already been done, um, which I will say is, I think, great to see around town. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing all this completed because I think it makes quite a difference, both in the look and the safety. Thank you. Others? Any comments from the audience on this item? Please. I, too, think this is a really good idea, and it looks like it's, it's well thought out. The only question I have is the, the lanes that are closed to provide additional seating for the businesses on Main Street, will they be, um, will they be open during the construction? Because that tends to create less margin for error in terms of, of driving. So my suggestion, for what it's worth, and I'm not a civil engineer, but uh, would be to... Um, work it out so the, the restaurants don't use that extra space in the street uh, during the construction. Thank you. Other comments or questions? Okay, we'll continue on. That ends our first reading tonight, Mayor. If it's all right with you, I'll roll right into the manager's report. Uh, there are two written reports in the meeting agenda materials. The first one is a report regarding flood insurance. It's required by FEMA that we produce this report. The village participates in the National Flood Insurance Program, which allows any owner or renter to purchase flood insurance. And in addition to that, as part of that program, we participate in the community rating system. This allows residents to receive a 20% reduction in those premiums. Uh, we are starting a recertification process now, and we are always striving to improve our rating score and pass those savings and premiums on to our, our residents and policyholders. Uh, more information about the flood insurance program is available on our website at downers.us. Uh, the second report in the packet is the annual report from the Stormwater Floodplain and Oversight Committee. Uh, this is a report that's required under the DuPage County Stormwater Ordinance. So just calling your attention that both of those reports are in tonight's agenda materials. If anybody has any questions on them, we'll be happy to answer them. Thanks, Dave. Any questions from the council? Those two reports? Then that ends our manager's report today, Mayor. Thank you. Rich, did you have something? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, just keep oh. up the good work on stormwater <laughs> improvement, mm -hmm. adding to the $58 million we've already spent. So mm -hmm. seems to me, um, in my experience in town, that the number of flooding events has been reduced, and it's starting to make a really difference, a real difference. Thank All you. All right. Enza. Attorney's report? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Only one item to present tonight, and that is an, an ordinance authorizing a special use for 1300 through 1418 Butterfield Road to permit a restaurant with a drive through and a parking variation for Butterfield Road Plaza. It will be on the March 7th active agenda, Mayor. That is all. Thank you. Thank you. Item 9, our agenda, public comments. This is the portion of the meeting where we take public comment on items not on tonight's agenda. If there's anyone that has something they want to address the council with, please come on down to the podium. <clears throat> Marshall Schmidt, I live at 4923 Seeley. Um, recently I learned that while the council was deciding whether to amend the zoning ordinance that required the consolidation of jointly owned contiguous lots to meet the 75-foot width requirement, the developer of the Longfellow property created shell organizations and transferred ownership of the Longfellow lots to create a checkerboard where no two lots were continu continuously owned, uh, at least by the same uh, entity. This caused alarm for several reasons. First and most important, the primary reason that was cited to amend the ordinance was to protect the ownership rights of developers who expected that it would be able to build 12 lots and that developers understood the ordinance to grandfather in previously platted lots. If that were true, however, shell corporations and a checkerboard would be unnecessary. The developer's behavior is evidence that it understood the ordinance meant exactly what it said and that it was necessary to spend the money to create the checkerboard. 
If that was the developer's understanding, then the arguments about protecting property owners' rights were at best misleading. Second, I also understand that the information about the developer's behavior was not shared with the public. I certainly did not know about it, and I was following the matter closely. If the information was not shared, it means that the village staff and perhaps at least some commissioners were working with the developer behind the scenes to coordinate getting around the zoning ordinance, which would be highly improper. If so, the community was completely excluded from the discussion. Third, to the extent the information was not shared, the applicability of the zoning ordinance was negotiated with the developer without any scrutiny. Ultimately, the ordinance was amended, so there was no opportunity to determine fairly and openly what the ordinance meant. And you'll recall that the Planning Commission uh, did, um, did raise questions about what the ordinance meant. Before I reach a, a final conclusion about this matter and decide whether any other action is necessary, I have 10 questions that I assume the staff can answer in short order in writing after the meeting and after they research the answers. One, when did the staff or the council learn of the checkerboard? How did the information come to light? Three, what communications did the council or staff have with the developer about the existence or impact of the checkerboard? Four, when did those communications take place? Five, how was the information shared with the council? Six, was the information shared with anyone else? If so, who? Eight, was the existence of the checkerboard ever made public? Nine, if so, how and when? If not, why not? I'm not asking for the content of any communication with lawyers, only facts that are not subject to any privilege, especially given that communications with the developer are not privileged. Thank you very much. Any other comments or questions from the audience? Okay. The mayor's report tonight. I'll only say that it's unfortunate when people make assertions, as we just heard, um, the idea that there would be some sort of a particular collusion process is, um, yeah, it's, it's disappointing, um, particularly when people know uh, better than that and it's campaign season. So that's upsetting and disappointing. Um, but, you know, whatever, whatever documentation we have is, as always, super transparent, available. I think we do literally several dozen FOIAs a day. Um, and we'll make any information available to anyone at any time. There are some links that were made, though, that were really not entirely appropriate. Um, there was an ordinance clarification that was done because there was some question about what the ordinance meant. And there was some clear evidence of historical application. And so we decided to clarify it. That's it. It's that simple and that straightforward. Um, any other assertions are just simply nonsense. Um, any other comments or questions from the council on the issue of the subject that was raised? Greg, please. Thank you, Mayor. Um, <clears throat> there were at least two of us, and I, I have active recollection of two of us who raised the idea of the checkerboard. I was one of them. Um, I believe my comment was something to the effect of it took me about five seconds to figure out that they could do that. Um, and as an attorney, and, and I know Mr. Schmidt is as well, um, you advise your client of all the various options and possibilities to protect their legal rights. I don't know, but I would assume that their attorney advised them uh, that this was a possibility in terms of protecting their right to develop the property. Now, it also would not have been necessary, absent his absurd reading of the code, uh, that required the clarification that ultimately passed. Be that as it may, it, if I thought of it and others thought of it, certainly their lawyer did too. And protecting their rights to develop the property only makes sense. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, Rich. Yeah, I have some uh, comments that on that, and this is based on um, two years on the Zoning Board of Appeals and two years with the uh, Plan Commission, and uh, coming to meetings. For, uh, since 2015, at least 80 percent of the meetings. Uh, one of the plan commission meetings was on a lot split that uh, was on the, uh, the corner of Seeley and Montgomery, and that lot contained uh, two legal non-conforming lots, 
Um, Mr. Schmidt was at that meeting. It was presented that those lots uh, were grandfathered in. And uh, in addition to my own personal knowledge that those were grandfathered in, uh, I spoke to several members of previous uh, councils and asked them what their opinion was without giving them any idea of what I thought. And to a person, they said that those lots were grandfathered in. I don't particularly like 50-foot lots. I would prefer that they would be larger. Um, I voted against that uh, potential lot split on Montgomery and Sealy. It was one of two. Uh, that was, uh, however, overturned by the village council. What was disappointing to me was even after people were presented with the facts that they were grandfathered and they continued with a campaign of uh, literally falsehoods. So uh, they were grandfathered in, they're still grandfathered in. Item 11 on our agenda, council member reports. This is an opportunity for council members to report out on other goings on in the community, groups they may be working with or they want to promote or talk about. We'll uh, look right and start left. Danny, you got anything tonight? No report. Thank you, Mayor. Chris? No report. Thank you, Mayor. Greg? I do have a report, Mayor. Um, I have a new business item uh, that's on the agenda tonight. Um, it's a pretty short write-up, and I will keep my presentation on it fairly brief. Um, essentially, there is a requirement in the Illinois Procurement Code that applies when spending state dollars um, that the... Uh, workforce, uh, when talking about a construction matter, um, have come from a source that has an apprenticeship requirement. They'd be uh, affiliated with a, uh, a registered apprenticeship program with the United States Department of Labor. Now there are plenty of studies out there that show that you get a better construction quality, you get a more efficient construction, and you get safer workplaces when you use uh, labor that has come from an apprenticeship program and come through an apprenticeship program. Um, as I mentioned, we already have to comply with this when spending uh, state dollars, and I think we should put it into the village code for when we are spending uh, just village dollars on construction projects. And so I would uh, move the council to direct staff to amend the village's purchasing policy to include a provision that all successful bidders and the bidder's subcontractors for public works construction projects in excess of $50,000 must participate in applicable apprenticeship and training programs approved and registered with the United States Department of Labor's Bureau of Apprenticeship and Training as provided for in Section 30-22 sub 6 of the Illinois Procurement Code. Second. Mayor, if I, I could jump in there. Under our new business policy, um, that motion was, if I understood it, actually to actually amend the purchasing policy. But I think the motion that's important here tonight and pursuant to our rules and policy would be simply a motion to direct staff to look into that amendment. I think I did say direct staff too. Yeah, but I, I apologize. Right, I just want to make sure that we caught If that. I misspoke, I apologize. I think we're all on the same page. All right, good, 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 good caution, Dave, and thank you for raising it, but I think we're all on the same page. All right, good. Just want to make it's it a, Sorry This is that. what we're doing tonight here is directing staff to consider yeah. the changes to our policy that Greg just thank brought you. up. Good. Rosie, you got the motion in the second. I do. Any questions or comments from the coll my colleagues? Uh, yes, I would, please. Not to not to duplicate anything, but I would just add, uh, I I fully support this. I think for all the reasons that Commissioner Jose mentioned, um, it's important that we um, bring this into our own projects. Um, I am interested to see sort of where we've been to date. I think that will probably be part of um, what the staff may come back with in terms of how we have um, done this without this ordinance, but. Um, I think it's important to put it down, and I, I plan on supporting this when it comes to us for a vote. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Rich? Yeah, I'm a, a fan of apprenticeship uh, programs, particularly in the trades, because uh, I, I think uh, that all the things that uh, Commissioner Jose mentioned uh, are true. Um, so, yeah, I like it. Okay. Greg, go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, just to answer you know, partially, at least, the question that Commissioner Gilmartin uh, asked. I actually, as part of my four hours of research, asked the, the staff to look into that. Um, in addition to all of the, the contracts that include state funding, they reviewed contracts that are just village funding. And I don't want to get the dates wrong, but for the period that they reviewed, um, all of the successful uh, contracting uh, 
bidders actually complied with this provision. So. Good information. Yeah. Thank you. Rose, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Jose? Aye. Commissioner Gilmartin? Aye. Commissioner Glover? Aye. Commissioner Colavaney? Aye. 